to get ready to go on stage in a few minutes. The original Shondells. These are the guys that recorded all those songs with Tommy James, except for Hanky Panky. But they were on all the songs after that. They performed on stage, they recorded, and they did some writing of all those songs. The guy standing next to me is a lead guitar player, Eddie Gray, and Eddie's going to get ready to get out on stage in a few minutes. And he's got the original guitars that he used to play 50 years ago. Now, anything that exists after 50 years is a gift. And that includes me and Eddie. And these guitars, the same ones that he used on the Ed Sullivan show, the same ones that he used in the studio, in, in the studio to actually record it. Eddie, what are you holding here in front of us now? Okay, uh, this is a, a Les Paul Custom. I used to use this in the studio in New York. Our equipment was always on the road traveling, but when I got back to New York every week, every Monday and Tuesday, we were in the studio, sometimes Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. Uh, we're talking Bell Sound there, up on the second floor there. Well, this was Allegro Sound oh, I'm sorry, Allegro. in the bottom of 1650, yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. But anyway, they would bring us over what we needed to do the recordings that night. And I always needed an electric guitar, this or that, but in 68 they brought this thing over. And what's really weird about it is I got so attached to this guitar, I used it every time I came into the city. You mean it wasn't yours up until then? No. And then I ended up buying it from the rental company, okay? And when we split up in 70, I, I worked for the next 14, 15 years playing in different bands I had, and I wore it out, okay? I, I used it so much, I wore the frets down to nothing, everything, it was just beat up, you know. So I gave it to a friend of mine to recondition for me, and he never got it done. So a couple of years ago, which would have been 30 years later, I got it back from him and I sent, uh, I sent it to a place in Kentucky called RS Guitar Works, and over a period of a year they redid the whole guitar for me. A lot of the parts had been lost, the plastic parts like the pickup rings, and it took quite a while to find the original what they were, because there are some parts on this guitar that are unique to just this guitar. They're, you know, uh, the, it's a custom guitar. Yeah, and it was the first year they started picking, building a double pickup version of this after they had a triple pickup version. So the first year they did it were some parts that weren't on any guitars they made. But I got attached to it because of the way it played and what it sounded like. Now, what do you use it for now? Okay, I do some songs on stage. What with songs? It. Okay, um, we'll start off with this tune called Do Something To Me. I'm trying to think of the first four or five tunes. Beginning of the show, I use this, and then I switch to a Telecaster I have. What's really weird is uh, some of the tunes that I Sweet Cherry Wine is one of the songs I, I you, use. Did you this. play this in the studio on Sweet Cherry Wine? Yeah, yeah, okay, and some other tunes that we had. So it's kind of neat for me to take it out on stage and work, you know. I, Well, Sweet Cherry Wine would have been. <laughs> and you played that guitar on Sweet yeah. Cherry Wine. All right. Any no. other songs that you played that guitar in the recording studio? What is that? Crimson and Clover. Oh yeah, okay, okay. Okay. When you get on stage, you can have an amplifier, I hope. I mean, so I'm yeah. just kidding. <laughs> it just sounds so different. Okay, now, you've got other guitars with you? Sure. Okay. Yeah. Can you show those to me? Yeah, let me grab another one. Well, the road guys got this for me as a gift when I, we were in New York, okay? And the guitar was so ugly that the Fender only made it for a few months, okay? And because of that, it's it's a rare guitar now. It's real rare, okay? There are guys, I want, when I went to Nashville with my Gibson 
I told the guys at the Gibson place I had this and they said there are guys down here that will kill for that instrument okay just because it's so rare you mm -hmm. know in fact it's so new after I had the work Look done at that. that I still have the plastic on the pick saw. Yeah, I'm not gonna take it well, off. Your guitar's so. gotta get dressed before it goes on. Yeah. Holy cow! But no, it's it's a serious instrument. I did some work on it. Well, yeah, but we're not on yet because oh, I, okay. I don't want this to, you know, I, I want. Okay. All right. Now tell me about tell me about this guitar. What is this? Okay, this is a, a Fender Blue here. Flower Telecaster. Okay. Um, I got this when I was in New York City with Tom, and the weird thing is, is a lot of people well, didn't like this you instrument. Yeah, you know, I'll pull the plastic off the pick door. Oh, wow. But it, there have been so few made, there are a lot of guys that want, to, that want one to play. You know, what you can have, you want, but... Um, you just had this redone, obviously, because... Yeah, Fender redid it for me, okay? Because the finish cracks and falls off. It's weird how the finish is done, but... Yeah, they redid it for me, and they couldn't do it for a while because Japanese Fender Company had the patent on the pa flower pattern, so I couldn't get it until they got the rights to use the flower pattern again, so... Good guitar, really nice. But you had the original flower pattern on oh, 50 yeah. years ago. What songs did you play with that? Okay, this. Uh, did you record with that? No. Okay. It was mostly the black one. But I used this on stage and I used this on the Ed Sullivan show. So when I see you on the Ed Sullivan show, that's the guitar you're playing? Yeah, the second time we played the Sullivan show, I was using this and I was doing Money Money. I forget what the other two was, but yeah, this will be. Would it have been Crimson and Clover or, um, or Crystal? Could have been Crystal, uh, Crimson and Clover on this. My Gretsch I used for uh, Crystal Blue for Do you have your Gretsch with you here today? Yeah. Could we see yeah. it? Sure, man. Now, which guitar is this? Okay, I used this on the Sullivan show, but this is the Crystal Blue Persuasion guitar. Okay, we did Crystal Blue. Yeah. So back at that time, this is what John Lennon used. But Lennon used a 6120 in the studio. Oh, really? Yeah. John had a 6120. That was his favorite guitar to record with. They always show him with the Rickenbacker, but he used a 6120. In the studio? Yeah. Now, this is a 6120, but they put a, this year, the 68, they put a Chet Atkins patch on it and a Chet Atkins logo on the, I think that's what he said. I had the binding repaired on it. Uh, from a place called Chicago Fretworks. <clears throat> These guys repair it when you get it back. Uh, you can't tell it's been repaired. Now this is the one you used to record Crystal Blue Persuasion. Yeah. So when I hear that, I hear this guitar. Yeah. And I hear your fingers yeah. picking this guitar. Yeah. And then on the Sullivan Show, this is what I used on the Sullivan Show the first time we were on there. Alright. Now, you're going to use this on stage tonight? Oh yeah. This guy here, is this one you tell me about? <laughs> yeah, I know, I'll be, I know nothing. Tonight. Yeah, well, I'll be using this tonight at the end of the show to do uh, Crystal Blue Persuasion. Okay, I'm looking you know, forward so to that. If you get a shot of it, that's what it'll be. We're going to get a shot of this. I'm excited. I'll be, uh, let's see, I'll be 20 years old again tonight. Well. You have no idea what that does. You yeah. have no idea the magic. Did, yeah. Did you ever play that lick before? I'm teaching Watch him. I'm teaching him. And he's almost got it down pat. So leave him alone. Are you sure you got it before you go on there? Well, I sure as hell hope so. <laughs> well, appreciate you taking this sketch we got. This was a chance to teach us a little bit about what we're going to be seeing tonight and about what we lived yeah. 50 years ago. 50 years yeah. ago. A blink of an eye, maybe two blinks of an eye, but here we are, brother, and uh, like for me, I spent the last five or six years, I have other instruments at home, I have a studio and I use them there, but uh, it was a project of mine to take all my old guitars and have them refurbished and put back together again, and then as luck would have it, we're out playing How do I get again, around to the front? so I can take them with me. How do I get around to the front? I can take them with me out on the road and, and get the use out of them. This guitar is a nice, really a nice guitar.
Well, I mean, it's beautiful, but it's so distinctive looking. Yeah, it's it's just a real neat instrument. I think I was telling you before, when you get time in on it, when you're younger and you put a lot of time in the instrument, it will actually change according to the way you play. Some people tell you, oh, he's crazy, he doesn't know what he's talking about, but if you have an instrument for 50 years, and you play it over that period of time, eventually it turns into something it really wasn't when you first bought it. It's like a glove that'll fit your hand yeah. after you wear it for 20 years. It is. Yeah. You know, I, it, it's hard to explain, but every... No, it's not. I, I can appreciate you know. what you're saying. Yeah. Not, I mean, even if it isn't, if, it, if it's doing that in your mind, then it's doing it. It satisfies you. The yeah. first four or five tunes will be on the Les Paul, the Black Les Paul. And the next uh, four or five tunes, next few tunes will be on the Blue Flower Telly. And then the last five tunes, which will be uh, Crystal Blue mm -hmm. Persuasion, mm -hmm. Money Money, Hanky Panky. That's all at the end of the show, the last five the tunes. Sweet Cherry Wine. Uh, yeah. Yeah. yeah, okay, good. Alright, I'm going to Ah, you'll get there. I'm all we're doing. Thank you.